All right, this video is all about finding square roots. I know some of y'all might have already heard this stuff already, but I want to make sure I did another video lesson just in case you need to go back and look at something. All right, so square roots. So the first thing we're going to look at is example one again. I know some of you already seen this. Find the two square roots of 49. So what two numbers can you multiply by itself? Okay, the two numbers that are the same, that you can multiply by itself to make 49. Uh, so in this case, we said that 7 is one of them, 7 times 7, and the other one is negative 7 times negative 7. Okay, so those are two different square roots that you can do of 49. All right, first, then we'll go over here. Next one, sample 2. Now, this is what the square root looks like, this little symbol. Square root of 25. What number can you multiply by itself to give you 25? And that would be 5. What number can you do? Um, there you go. What number can you do now over here? Square root of nine sixteenths. Okay, the negative out front is like negative times something. Okay, so it's negative one times the square root of nine sixteenths. Well, what I like to do is personally is like to split them up into two different numbers and do the square root of nine and the square root of sixteen. Okay, square root of nine is going to be three. And the square root of 16 is going to be 4, so it becomes 3 fourths. We do that by squaring it there, and end up giving an answer of negative 3 fourths, because negative 1 times 3 fourths is negative 3 fourths. Okay, what they did here in this example is a little different. They have an uh, they have a number, 3 fourths, because they figured out mentally that 3 fourths times 3 fourths is 9 16, so they just did that mentally. I personally would split it up and say square root of 9, square root of 16, 3, and 4, and go that way. The last one, C, 2.25. Um, the thing I like to do with this problem is to get rid of the decimal, uh, make it 225 as a whole number, and then you can add the decimals later on. Um, two numbers that come to mind when I do 225 is 15, because 15 times 15 is 225, and then I just add the decimals back in, ends up being 1.5, uh, and also negative 1.5. Special note here, when they add, like in A, Notice there's no negative sign up here. They just want the positive answer. Notice in B, they put the negative out front. They just want the negative answer. And C, you'll see the plus and minus. That's They're wanting both of them. Notice it's 1.5 and negative 1.5. The next one, example three, involves doing some math. Uh, just so you understand, uh, square roots are technically exponents. Um, they are actually exponents that are raised to the one-half power. So when you're doing order of operations, you're going to do them when you normally do the E part of PEMDAS. So in this case, square root of 36 is done first. That's 6. Then 5 times 36, 30 ends up giving you 37. This one here, do you have any parentheses? No. Any exponents? Yes. 18 over 2. You can simplify this one. This one's easier to simplify. 18 divided by 2 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So it becomes 3 plus 1 fourth is 3 and 1 fourth. The last one on here, parentheses, yes, take care of what's inside there. Exponents, the yes, the square root 81 is considered an exponent. That's 9. And 9 times 9 is 81, hence you see there. And 81 minus 5 is 76. All right. Now I'm going to look at another uh, few examples. Um, if you want to check to see if you understand it, okay, you can freeze your screen in a few moments. Go ahead and freeze your screen if you want to give these a try. You want to try these on your own. If not, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click the answer so you have them to check your work. There you go. So you can check to see if you did them right. And then I'm going to pull up also cube roots. It's a little bit different. Okay, 14 cube roots. All right, cube roots, the same idea. Only difference is it's going to be raised to the one third power. So multiplying something by the uh, uh, three times. So what is the cube root of eight? So what number times itself three times will give you eight? So what's the cube root of eight? In this case, it'd be two because two times two times two is eight. So a lot of mental math going on here. Uh, same thing, next one, square root of negative 27. All right, negative there. We know that three negatives equal a, uh, three negatives equal a negative. Um, so we know it's going to be a negative number, and that would end up being negative 3. Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give you 27. The big thing is like really, you know, guess and check kind of thing, but the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. Over here, 64. 
164. Personally, again, I like to split them up. I would do the cube root over 1 up the top, cube root over 64. So we know the numerator will be 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. But then what number uh, can you multiply by itself to get to 64? And that would be 4. So we know that bottom will be 4 eventually. So it would be 1 fourth uh, inside there. All right. So we got our answer for 1 fourth. All right. That's the first part. Part number two, example two. Same idea, doing your order of operations to go through this, the cube root. So we have two multiplied by the cube root of negative 216 minus three. So in the first one, we do the cube root, the exponent piece, the cube root, which is negative six. Two times negative six is negative 12, minus three is negative 15. Over here, we have the cube root of 125, and then raise that to the third power. So we know the cube root of 125 is actually 5, and then you actually reverse it, and 5 to the third power is actually 125. All right, and then add, the 21, add 21 to it, you get 146. And the last one, solving, which only really requires you to plug it in, do the same exact, same exact steps. So we're going to take x equals 182, plug it back into each x, and go and solve using order of operations. So when you plug in 192, you get 192 over 4 plus the cube root of 192 over 3. Go from there. You can, I would simplify that first. Okay, ends up giving you 64 in there. So 192 over 4 is 48, and then the 192 over 3 becomes a 64. The cube root of 64 is next, which is what number can you multiply by itself three times to 64? And that answer would be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. 48 plus 4 is 52. Hopefully that makes sense. Here's a couple practice problems you can try on your own. Just see, make sure you understand everything. And I'll have you, if you want to freeze it, please do so. So you guys, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go ahead and freeze it, and then I'll post the answers up here in a moment. 3, 2, 1. Here's your answers. Hope that helps out.